So we might finish up with uh, JDBC today. Uh, if not, then we'll go ahead and finish up with it on Monday. Uh, we, uh, we, we left off uh, with basically pulling data on a person, uh, loading up an emails in, in a different method here, uh, loading up all the people in one, one big giant file here. Uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, go over this with a little bit more of a more fine-grained uh, comb here uh, and really re think about what we're doing when we're doing a, uh, a wild card like this. Uh, so to understand that, let's come over here to MySQL Workbench and let's go ahead and select everything from email where there's a particular person that we're looking for, say Grace Hopper here, person ID is equal to 10. Right. Now over here in the code, what, uh, what data were we actually interested in? Uh, we were interested in the email address. Were we interested in the email ID? No, if we had an email class, maybe we were, would be interested in that. Were we interested in the person ID? No, that's what we already had. But think about sending all of this data over the wire, right? Remember that uh, the network is still your biggest bottleneck in computing in 2023. Uh, processors are fast, memory is cheap, but what, uh, what is the true bottleneck is sending stuff over the wire like I'm doing right here. So it's not that big of a deal. One byte or four bytes, eight, 12, 16 bytes being sent over the wire. But now think about a real system where you're doing this every second of every day uh, and you're pulling a lot more data than just one, two emails. You're pull, pulling all the people and all of their emails for a report of some sort, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, now you're wasting a lot of bandwidth. It's gonna get noticeably slower. So let's come back over here and instead of using the wild card, let's be more intentional about the data that we want. I'm only going to select the address from the email table where the person ID is equal to that. Now, when I do that over here in my SQL Workbench, you see the difference. Right? You're only pulling that one field, right? and you're saving here. You're only saving what 16 bytes? Not that big of a deal. But in uh, if 16 bytes over the long haul, over uh, millions and millions of queries, that matters, right? Uh, do you remember many, several years ago Google changed their logo? Uh, they made it so that there was only like a minuscule amount, like the, the, the image of their go uh, the, the Google logo was only like a few bytes difference, right? By taking out a little bit of a curve and a little, uh, make it a little bit curvy or sharper over here or something like that. Uh, why did they go to the bother of changing it so that it's only a few bytes of difference? What's the most downloaded image <laughs> there is? The Google logo image, right? So when you're talking about millions or billions of downloads and, uh, and usage like that, then those little tiny bits do matter, especially over a network. Uh, over here, you can also change it so that you're not pulling everything about a person, you're just pulling the person ID, right? The first name, the last name, and the date of birth. Be more intentional. Even though you're actually pulling every single uh, uh, column in this case, right? You still wanna be a little bit more intentional about what you're doing. Because imagine if we left it with a star right here, right? Let's go ahead and select everything from person. There we go. Oops, select everything from person. All right, we are using all four of these columns in our query. So maybe you, oh, okay, well, it's safe enough. Go ahead and put in a star there. What if some DBA, the database administrator, comes along and gets it into his head uh, that, you know what, uh, we're gonna start storing images. All right, so a headshot, blob, there we go and it's allowed to be null, right? In other words, what we're going to be storing in here is an image.jpg of, of, of their face, right? Uh, and suppose that those can be rather large images, a megabyte, two megabytes, four megabytes. Guess what you're doing over here by using the uh, wildcard? You're pulling those four megabytes even though you're never actually gonna use them. Now it really matters, right? St transmitting uh, megabytes or hundreds of kilobytes over the wire that you ultimately ignore at the other end, that's not a good thing, right? So let's go ahead and redo all that, uh, undo, there we go. Be more intentional, it future-proofs yourself, okay? Uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and use multi-line strings so that you can go ahead and format this a little bit better. Uh, let me go ahead and move this to the end. Eclipse isn't all that great uh, with uh, multi-line strings and formatting, but let's go ahead and try to do it. There we go. Uh, why are you not allowing me to do this? 
Ooh, mystery. I can do multi-line strings. What's wrong with you? Anyway, you could make it so that it looks like this. From person. Uh, why are you not letting me do the multi-line string? All right, insert missing quote. Go ahead. Uh, no. All right, let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, I am using Java 17, so don't ask me. Multi-line strings should work. All right, you're working there. What was I not quoting? Oh, wow. I don't see it at all. Does anybody see it? Maybe it doesn't like this. Oops. And get rid of that. Okay. It doesn't like you beginning it right there. All right, fine. We'll go ahead and line this stuff up. Can, okay. You're not the auto aligner is not going to work in this case either. So Eclipse hasn't been updated to uh, live in a world of multi-line strings. So be it. There we go. Uh, actually, I, I would align it with that so that the SQL statements keywords are all aligned and then all of these are aligned vertically right, so you can go you can go like this if you want to uh, I generally don't do it unless that's uh, a really really big query all right, all right. there's a multi-line string uh, demo let's go ahead and see if it still works yes it does all right. so it looks like we've got Joe Schmo over there in addition to from last class or something like that uh, Grace Hopper Alan Turing and Margaret Hamilton and Donald Newth and we're pulling all their emails. Another thing that you might want to do is we've got a method here to load all of the people. What if you just wanted to load one person? Just like we loaded the emails of a single person, you might want to have a public person load person by ID method where you're given a person ID. And here I'm just going to go ahead and return null we're not actually going to do this. If you want to, go ahead and watch one of the other streams, uh, and I'll put it to do implement. What would it look like? You would make the same basic connection. Right, uh, here, load persons. You'd make the same basic connection. Instead of having from person, what would you have? Where person ID is equal to this. And, of course, you wouldn't pull that across the wire because you already have it. Right? But what other con uh, design consider it? And then... You'd, uh, you'd have, instead of a while loop here, you'd have an if statement. Uh, if that record exists, then pull it. Uh, if it doesn't exist, what happens then? So let's go ahead and document this. Uh, loads the, the person, the person, load object from the database, including their emails, including whatever else, put, it, put that in the documentation. Uh, identified by the given person ID. Well, what if we selected somebody that doesn't exist? Let's come over here. Select from person where person ID, oops, person ID is equal to, I don't know, 42. Am I going to get anybody back? Nope. So what behavior do you want over here? If no such record exists, dot, 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 what should we do? What are some options? What's one option? We could throw an exception. You asked for something that didn't exist. I'm going to throw it back at you. You handle it, right? Uh, if you're going to do that, though, I would argue that you probably should have some sort of interface that to check to see if that person exists, right? So load person by ID if exists, <laughs> don't call it that. Just make it part of the behavior. If no such record exists, what's another option? Returns null. I like that better. And then you can check for null, right? Just like you can go ahead and uh, catch an exception, right? All right, so I'll leave that as a to-do there for you. Uh, actually, we've got enough time. Weekend's coming up. Uh, load person. Ah, I don't want to do it. All right. You do it. All right. uh, it's just a big giant cut and paste. In fact, 
that has me rethinking what we did before. If you have this method to load a person by ID, should you have this method load everybody? Or what could you do? You could go ahead and select person ID from person, only pulling all of those IDs. And if you've got a, a method that loads them up by their ID, go ahead and use that. So one should use the other or the other way around, but you probably shouldn't go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right? Uh, in fact, let's think about that solution. What if we went the other way? What if I say loaded up all of the people, right? person or list a person, list of person, people is equal to load persons. There we go. And then iterate through people to find the one with person ID, dot, 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 and then return it. Does that sound like a good idea? It didn't really happen in this section, at least I hope it didn't happen, uh, but we saw a lot of solutions that did this with files. Right? So for each invoice, for each item in the invoice, let's go ahead and go back to that item file and open it all and search for that one line in the file that we were looking for. Right? Okay, for, we found that. Close the file. Now for that second record, do it again. Open up that file, go through potentially every single line to find what you're looking for and find it, right? Open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. Right? Instead of just opening it once. Not that big of a deal with files because they're right there, right? They're right on the same machine. File I.O. is still expensive, but it ain't nearly as expensive as network I.O. So is this a good idea? Load up every single person, all million people in your database, and ignore all of them except for one. Pull all million people across the wire in order to just find one person. Good idea, bad idea? I don't like that idea either. So this function down here should probably call this function up here if you're going to have function calling function. If you want to go ahead and repeat the code, okay, it, it's a, a small sin, right? but uh, you could pro definitely don't want to be repeating this code over and over and over again. Right? Put that into a connection factory. Okay. All right. Well, I, I need a way to actually put stuff into my database. So let's go ahead and create up another person here. Person P, uh, yeah, I can use P, is equal to new person. And I don't yet have a database connection to with this person, uh, David Ross. All right. Anybody who kn know who David Ross is? No, nobody follows baseball. All right, fine. Or Ned Yost, he was just inducted to the Royals Hall of Fame. No, and Ned Yost? No, okay. Anyway, uh, person ID, the just the first name, the last name. We won't worry about the, uh, yeah, let's worry about the date of birth then. Uh, and so come over here to the demo. And I don't know what their ID is, but, and I have no idea what his date of birth is. So let's go to local date dot of. We'll just go ahead and say it was 2023, uh, 04. Uh, actually, what, what's next Thursday? Uh, 30th, 0330, opening day. Right. Again, nobody follows baseball, huh? You know, I don't follow uh, basketball all that much, but when I was in Toronto, I definitely took the opportunity to go to a Raptors game. I had no idea that the Raptors were good, <laughs> or no, not good. I th they're good. Well, I thought they were in last place right now, well, above the Wizards. Yeah. I had to look it up when I was there, but I had no idea that they won in, in 19. I saw their banner there. Oh, wow. Okay. What happened to the uh, Golden State Warriors? <laughs> they defeated the Golden State Warriors. And I did not remember that at all. all right. So I'm not going to put in an ID here for David Ross because he's not yet in the database. All right. That means that I might want to redesign my class over here to provide a constructor where I can const construct a person without having their, uh, uh, their ID, right? but everything else. Uh, local date, or, uh, which is their date of birth. There we go. And pass that along, but then a null value for that person ID because I do not yet have a, uh, a value associated with that database yet, that database record. Uh, and now what I want to do is to do put uh, P into the database. Right? In other words, this is called saving right? or persisting. Right? 
That's what we usually call it. Persist it to the database. Okay. All right, so should I use that database data loader class? <laughs> data saving, data persisting, does that sound like loading to you? Probably not. Single responsibility principle. That class is responsible for loading data. That class is responsible for saving data. So let's go ahead and create another class here. Data saver, account data or something like that. And let's go ahead and create a public static void for now void, uh, save person, right? or add person to the database or something like that, right? That takes a person P. Right? And now over here, you can go ahead and call it statically. Uh, what would I call it? Data saver <laughs> dot save person, David Ross. By the way, he's the manager of the Cubs. Right? Ned Yost was the manager of the uh, Royals for two, two consecutive World Series appearances. Right? Great knowledge to have, right? <laughs> All right, so data saver, we're going to save this person here. Help me out. What do I need to do first? In fact, this will look extremely familiar. It's the same exact process here, right? Create a connection to your database, prepare your query, execute your query, but we don't have any results to process. Why? Because we're putting stuff into the database, not pulling stuff out of the database. So when we put stuff into the database, we're not expecting the database to give us anything back. Right? Uh, did we have anything when we executed this insert into email statement? Nope. It just did what it was going to do and reported down here that it was successful. Okay. And then, of course, we close our resources. So I'm going to come over here and start again. Bad habits here. Die hard. I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste this stuff that should be into its own class. Right? And I'm going to grab this uh, catch block that rethrows so it compiles. There we go. There. there. Made my connection, step one. Step four, jump ahead so that you don't forget. Con.close. Now I need to go back to step two, formulate my query. For that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look, I'm, I'm going to develop queries over here in the uh, MySQL workbench simply because I need to know that they're syntactically correct. So there's my, uh, there's my statement to insert somebody. Let's bring it over here and think about it. There. Now this might be a case where you do want a multi-line string. First of all, person ID. Let's get it to compile. Person ID. Should I be using a person ID over here? I did that over here. Why? Because this is just test data. Right? I needed it to be predictable because I needed uh, Grace Hopper's uh, 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 person ID here to be 10 so that I could insert her emails over here. But over here in a production system, should you be doing key management? Probably not. So that gets rid of this first token. All right, first name, last name, date of birth. We don't want to hard code it to these values. So what should we do? What was our placeholder in JDBC? Question mark, question mark, question mark. We did question marks, right? Uh, we did it over here with respect to emails, didn't we? Yep. There is a parameter. We do not use string concatenation. String concatenation is almost always wrong. It, it is always wrong, period. All right. All right. Let's come back over here. And let's reformat this a little bit since we're doing multi-line strings. I like to actually, there we go, align them like this because I, I've got one, two, three values, one, two, three placeholders. It's much easier to see this. If you screw up and you have multiple or uh, uh, an incorrect number of placeholders for an incorrect number of columns, you'll know right away when it uh, ends up with a, uh, uh, an exception. But it's easier to see there's the first one, thir second one, third one, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right. And that's why I like uh, the, uh, fe this feature that was uh, introduced into Java. It's in many other languages too. Right. We've got our query. Let's go ahead and prepare our query. Prepared statement, statement, PS is equal to con dot prepare, prepare statement of query. We need to set those, so ps.set, the first one, in fact, all three of them are strings. 
So this will be ps dot set string. The first one is always indexed at one, uh, and we need a last name. So p dot or first name, sorry, p dot get first name. ps dot set string to p dot get last name, and the last one is ps dot set string three p dot get date of birth. Except that date of birth is not a string. How did we represent date of birth over here? As a varchar 10. In other words, an ISO 8601 formatted string. Guess why we do that? Because that's the standard. If I dump this to a string, that will be the formatting automatically. Right. Okay. Then I execute. Execute the query. To do that, I go ps.execute update. Now it's not really an update, is it? It's an insert statement. doesn't matter. JDBC does not like additional names. So create, retrieve, update, and destroy, right? Take out the retrieve, create, which is going to be insert, update, which is update, and destroy, which is delete. All three of those things are all going to be execute update. So if you're going to delete something, it's still execute update. If you're going to update something, it's update. If you're going to insert something, it's update. It's just update. Right. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if this works. We were trying to insert who? David Ross, right? Let's go ahead and run this. Yay. It seems like it worked. Let's go ahead and come over here and confirm that it worked. Select everything from person. There's David. David Ross. Right. With that birth date of yesterday, or opening day, uh, a, week from next, uh, a week from yesterday. Uh, and he's got 42, which is wrong. That's just another joke. What, who should be 42? Oh, nobody knows 40, uh, Jackie Robinson? He's 42, and he's only, only a 42. That's why when you go, uh, uh, when, when, whenever I'd go to a, a college game, I'd see people with 42, and I'm like, what? Wait, what? And, of course, college doesn't uh, retire numbers. Uh, so uh, they, don't re re they have not retired 42. Uh, Jackie Robinson, though. All right. All right, so uh, David Ross, there he is. But what did we not have from David Ross? From email. We don't have any of his emails. Well, that's because we didn't create any. Let's come back over here and do that now. So p.add email. Uh, go at cubs.com. Right. p.add email. Yay, at cubbies.com. There we go. I'll go ahead and add those two emails there. Is that going to get them into the database though? Did I write code over here in the data saver to persist to save the emails? Nope. So let's do that. You could go ahead and write another function to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it right here. After the person is in to do, now insert their emails, email addresses. Right, dot, dot, dot. So for string email in the collection of uh, p dot get emails. Oh, do I not have a get setter? Can't believe I don't have a setter. I probably added it later, right? And so I don't have a uh, or a getter. I say uh, if that's all right, we can rectify that with a really quick getter. There we go. Get emails. I don't want the setter though. There we go. Okay, uh, and now over here, we can go ahead and add the emails, we can get the emails, and then persist them. So we need another prepared statement. Uh, we need another query, actually, first, right? So insert into email. What do we need for emails, though? Let's take a look at our schema. Right. Do we need the ID? Nope, that's auto-generated. We need the address, we have that. What else do we need? The person ID. The person that we just inserted. And remember, he's 42, right? So we need that. We need the address and the person ID. Right. Values, and then two parameters here. PS is equal to con dot prepare statement uh, of query. There we go. PS dot set string 
the first one to the email address that we're iterating over here, and then ps.setsint of one, two to I don't know yet. What is their person ID? Well, I saw it before it was 42. <laughs> is hard coding that value going to work? No. So we're going to have to figure this out. Before we do, let's always be good stewards of our resources. Once I've executed this update, I am done with that prepared statement. So should I do something there? PS dot close. I could have closed it down here, but if I'm reusing it in here, then I'm closing a different one, right? It's kind of like in C where you allocate memory and you've got a pointer to it. And before you free up that memory, you make that pointer point to somewhere else. Can you free up that memory anymore? Nope. You've got a memory leak. Here you've got a resource leak. So let's just go ahead and make sure that we're closing it immediately after we're done using it. Okay. Close it immediately after you're done using it. PS dot execute update. There we go. Okay. Now before I show you how to fix this 42 here, let's also think about being good stewards of this prepared statement. Let's just look at that first line right there. Is that query string, is that string ever going to change? Why declare it and redeclare it and reset it for every iteration of this for loop? Right there. Likewise, is that prepared statement ever going to change? It's the same query. The values are going to change. These parameters are going to be reset for each, one of the, uh, each time you call these two uh, uh, functions here. But why would you prepare it and close it, prepare it and close it, prepare it and close it? This is actually the whole purpose of creating a prepared statement so that you can reuse it. It's the same query. You prepare it once. You close it once after you are done with it. Okay? But you need to reset it for each iteration. You need to execute it for each iteration. Now, what about this 42? Okay? That 42 cannot be hard-coded. So we're going to need some sort of person ID. So execute the update int person ID is equal to something. What we're going to do, or what we're going to have to do, is we're going to have to modify this statement that executes this update to also give us back the primary key that it just generated. And to do that, it's pretty easy. All we need to do is change how we prepare the statement. Statement dot return generated keys. Right. So we're going to prepare this query this query right here that has not changed. But also I'm giving it a parameter here to say, I want you, when you generate a key because you're inserting something new, I want you to return that key uh, back to me. 42, 43, 105, whatever it happens to be. To do that, we now do expect a result set back. So result set, on here I will call it something, keys is equal to execute update. Let's go ahead and bring that in. Import that. Uh, it should be execute update. Why are you complaining? Uh, yeah, oh, oh, sorry. Not ps execute update. It is another call. Uh, ps dot, uh, what is it? Get generated keys. There we go. All right. So execute the update and then pull the generated keys out. We're only inserting one record with this query, right? So we're only expecting one result back. So let me go ahead and advance the result set to the first uh, result. To do that, I'm going to go keys.next. Right. That returns true or false depending on whether or not it worked. But if it didn't work, you're probably going to get an exception out of this. So it probably worked. And since we're only inserting one record, we're only expecting one thing back. So we're going to go to the first and only result. Now we're going to pull that result, keys.getInt. And unfortunately, we, don't, uh, we may or may not know the, uh, the name of that key. We could probably do something like this, person ID. Right? But it's just as easy to do it one, using one indexing. You're only going to get one thing back, that generated key. So get that one thing back. Right? Remember that this one is the same thing as these ones. It doesn't start at zero. It's, it uses one indexing. So give me the first column because there's only one column. Right. 
then close the connection, or close the prepared statement, excuse me, and then you can use it down here. Let's go ahead and start from a clean database here. So I'm going to go ahead and reset all of this. Okay. Come over here to my demo, and let's go ahead and execute it. There we go. We still have Joe Schmo in there for some reason. I don't know where he's showing up. Did I put him over here? Oh, yeah, I did. He's right here. I didn't intend to do that. That was from another class, right? There we go. Uh, but otherwise, uh, David Ross should now be in there. So let's go ahead and select everything from person P, join email E on P dot person ID is equal to E dot email ID. And we'll just go ahead and select everybody out here. Oops, that's wrong. Come on. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> duh. Is anybody of person ID going to match an email ID? No, person ID. There we go. That's what I meant. There we go. All right, so Grace Hopper, Grace Hopper, Margaret Hamilton, Donald Newth. Uh-oh. What happened? Oh, because I just reset the database again. Run it again. There we go. Uh, and wait for it to stop. There we go. And now go ahead and run this. And we should see David Ross in there twice. Why? He's only the one person, 41. Now it's not sacrilege. Uh, 41's not retired. Uh, and then go Cubs and yaycubbies.com. Cut. Any questions? All right. You can imagine that uh, this is going to be a lot of work if you were to do this for a real system. CRUD, create, retrieve, update, and destroy. That looks like a minimum of four methods to me times the number of tables that you have. Plus, whatever convenience functions you want. Load up all people. Load up one person. Load up one person by their ID. Load up one person by their social security number. Load up one person by some other criteria. Check to see if a person exists, right? So you could say, like, you may not need all of those, but you can very easily see using a, you know, CRUD four times, say, 10 different methods for, uh, for each table, right? So uh, you know, it can get unwieldy, right? Keep it simple. Uh, write convenience functions as you see necessary to make your work easier. But then at the end of the day in a real system, you're going to use what's called an ORM. And that's something that we'll talk about next week. All right, I'll, I'll give you a JPA demo after we're done with J, uh, JDBC. If you want to use JPA for your project, you can. Uh, I, would, uh, I would not fuss with it too much. If, uh, it, it can be a bear to set up. Once it's set up, though, it's smooth sailing. Right? Uh, but I will show you JPA next week. Uh, and if you want to use it, go ahead. But otherwise, just go ahead and use JDBC. Okay? You're not going to write 10 times 4 times number of tables methods. Right? You're only going to write a few. Right? Uh, and you'll have to use our methods anyway for the API. Or implement our methods anyway. Okay? All right, uh, what else? Oh, so let's talk about some of the best, uh, best practices. Uh, we already talked about the first one. Avoid the star operator. I'll just cut and paste all of this. All right. Why? Uh, it selects all the columns and sends them over the wire, taking network bandwidth, even if you're not going to end up using them. Don't waste bandwidth. That is your biggest bottleneck in modern computing still. Right? It's not the speed of light. Uh, it is bandwidth, sending stuff over a wire. Or, I don't know, do you call uh, fiber optic? Yeah, you still call fiber optics wires, right? right. Uh, Google announced that they were coming to Omaha. It's going to still be years before they get there. And it'll be years yet before they go past 168. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. Uh, but once we're there, then, then maybe this goes away. <laughs> or, uh, you, slow, uh, you, you slow internet users, right? Uh, what's the fastest here in Lincoln? Being on campus is the fastest. We're T3. Right. But what's the fastest service? Anybody know? Do you get fiber at all? Allo? Allo? Okay. All right. Uh, we don't have Allo. All right. So if you're not going to use it or need it, don't query it. Don't waste the bandwidth. Only query that which you need by using. Uh, and then join means redundant data is transmitted, so you probably want to avoid that. Uh, if you did this with a join like we did over here, look at all that data, that repeated data that you're pulling. 
This is why I split it out into one query to, to select the first people and then another query uh, to select all the emails. Why? Because I didn't want Grace, Grace, Grace coming over the wire th twice. I didn't want Donald, 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 Nuth, Nuth, Nuth coming over the wire twice. I wanted it coming over the wire once. Right. Uh, not using the star operator protects you from weird database changes like adding a blob to your database. I, I got rid of that, didn't I? Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> There is a there is a blob uh, in my database right now. Right. It's being ignored, so be it. And I'm not inserting anything, but whatever. Right. All right. So avoid that. Right. When I when I post this, I, well, if I if I post that part, then I will definitely get rid of that. Right. Uh, second one: security issues for this course only. Are you going to be storing passwords in a Java source file? Uh, this is actually unfortunately very common. Uh, in fact, uh, several years ago, research, in fact, every year, researchers do this over and over again, uh, will we'll, uh, simply just scrape all public repos on GitHub or Bitbucket or something like that for dumb coders who have checked in a plain text password in their source files. Uh, and then guess what? I know your password now, right? All they have to do is do a grep for or a search for variable names that say password or pass or pass wd or something like that right uh, and so don't do that uh, in real life right that's fine for this course but for this course do use a password that you do not care about why because we'll see it your partner will see it that's why i'm using a password i don't care about cs2 right? uh, if anybody screws around with my database i'll just wipe it and change the password right? i still have access to do that in practice, the way that you handle this is through what's called a data source. So what you can do is you can set up your database server so that when you bring up the server, when, when you restart the server, you have to sit there and you have to enter the password. But that's the only time that you do it. Now, anybody that connects to that doesn't need to provide the password. Instead, you've set up a data source that pre-approves that server over there. Right? They're okay to come in without a password. They're not okay to come in without a password. Right. If the server ever goes down, then it comes back up. It's still waiting for somebody to sit there and put in a password, but it's only ever done once. So anytime the server do goes down or it gets restarted for maintenance, somebody does have to proactively go in and put in a password, but you don't have to do that with, from your application. Another way that you could do this is by setting up a passwordless connection. And this is, uh, this is most, more common in my opinion. Uh, all you need to do is set up your server so that that server over there coming on over, uh, from that IP address, coming over from that port, they're good. You don't need to authenticate them. Then you, on the network level, you shut off all other access. You firewall everybody out. Nobody can get into your database server from the network level. Therefore, they couldn't get in at all. Right? But that one over there, they're pre-approved. They can go ahead and come in without a password. I kind of do that myself. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and you've all SSH'd into the CSE server before. Yeah. Have you ever SSH'd in without a password? Uh, didn't prompt, it didn't even prompt me for a password. How did I do that? I set it up so that we had a negotiation, not with the sysadmins. I, I, I set this up. I set up a crypto key uh, and then I put that crypto key up on both computers, on the server and on my computer. So that all it that does is it goes back and forth automatically to authenticate with that crypto key, that SSL key certificate or whatever. Right? And so I never have to enter my password in again. It's kind of bad when you forget your password because <laughs> uh, uh, you're not typing it in on a daily basis. At that point, you reset it. But I, if I ever reset my password, I don't need to reset that uh, SSH key. Right? GitHub does something similar. Right? You have to, now you have to generate a key, uh, a user key for all your interaction, you don't actually give them your password. There you go. All right. Best practice tip number three, make sure that you close your resources. Right. Failure to close your resources wastes them. You may run out of connections. Make sure that you close them in the proper order. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my demo and I'm going to try, I'm going to cut and paste this stuff here. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do be wasteful for int i equals zero, i is less than 30. Uh, let's go with 25. I don't want to be locked out completely. I will go ahead and make my connection. 
and never sever it. Uh, catch exception E and don't do anything. Right. Uh, and then I'm going to, what, what it would be, thread.sleep. I, I don't want it to immediately just die. I'm going to go ahead and sleep for 10 seconds here. Okay. Surround that with a try catch, yes. This is in milliseconds, so 10,000 milliseconds is 10 seconds. Uh, let's go ahead and execute this. Right. It's sitting there for 10 seconds. Let's come over here and show process list. Maybe I do need to be faster. There we go. There's all my connections that are open right now. What are they doing? Nothing. They're sleeping. All right. If you open up 20 connections, 25 connections, whatever, all right, fine. Uh, once this is done, I, I, actually, oh, it is done. All right, there we go. Let's come back over here. If you get lucky, it will close all those connections for you. If you don't get lucky, or if you open up, say, not 25 connections, but you try to open up 35 connections, let's find out what happens. Oh, wow, I was able to do, oh, whoa. Serious? Have they upped it? Oh, wow. How many of these are there? I wish, I was, is there to show process list? There's no, it's not really data that I'm pulling. Oh, wow, okay. So let's try to figure this out. Um, 100? Certainly you're gonna stop me from doing 100, right? Oh, wow. Oh, it's probably just blocking me. Uh, those aren't 100 connections right there. It's probably just blocking me. It oh, oh, it's probably because I'm not catching the exception. There we go. Throw new runtime exception. Sorry. In my haste to get this done uh, fast uh, as a demo, I forgot to, to do that. Oh, come on. There we go. There. User Seaburk already has more than the max user connections, uh, active connections. And then finally, it killed my program. All right, I wonder what the, can I show that? Nope, select that. I don't know what it is, but I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that it's probably only 30. So close your resources. Failure to close your, re your resources may mean that you run out of connections. When you run out of connections, you can't open any more. Hopefully they get reset after a five minute timeout. Right? They'll go to sleep for five minutes, you never use them, it'll, it'll automatically kill them. Okay, make sure that you close them in the proper order as well. Uh, we've been doing this these, the, this entire time. Uh, use prepared statements. Yeah, that, I'll do this. I'll do it like this. Uh, there we go. Always use prepared statements. Never. I'm, and I'm, uh, yes, statements exist. Put them out of your mind. Treat it as they do not even exist. Unprepared statements. Uh, in general, strings can contain anything, uh, in your, including SQL code. Somebody could go ahead and probe your system by instead of entering in like a username, they enter in a net, what's called an SQL injection, right? And then we've got little Bobby tables. We've looked at Bobby tables before, right? Yes, no? All right, let's take a look. Uh, X, XKCD, Bobby tables, or exploits of a mom it's called. There we go. So there's the comic. Uh, the school calls and says, uh, your son, uh, son's school, we're having computer trouble. Oh, did, did he break something in a way? Did you really name your son Robert? And then you close the string with a single quote here. And then you close the SQL statement and then drop table students. And then you put in hyphen, hyphen. What was hyphen, hyphen again? Comment. In other words, you are injecting some SQL code right here if they use string concatenation. If you're thinking that they use string concatenation to select a student out, right, that means that you're going to end that string concatenation with a single quote, insert your own command, drop table students, and then whatever was out after that string concatenation gets ignored because you treat it like a comma. Right? That's an SQL injection attack. Right? And if you've, your server's not set up properly, if you're not sanitizing your inputs, like she tells them, you hope you've learned to sanitize your database inputs, Right, then you, you're gonna have you're be, gonna be susceptible to an SQL injection. Uh, if you're interested in how this works, we do a cross-site scripting attack 
as a, uh, uh, a bonus, or not a bonus, but as an advanced activity in uh, lab 10. Right? So you have to modify your database to allow for a, uh, an SQL injection, and then uh, we give you an SQL injection that you put in uh, when you add, a, add an album. Instead of adding an album, what it does is it adds some HTML. And then when, you, when it uh, renders on the other end and it's not sanitized either when the data gets in or when it comes out, guess what? The table ends and now you've got this link down here saying, please click here to re-log in. You click that and then it goes to a, a, a password farm, right? Where, where we, we, we don't actually grab your password. So don't, don't think that it's going to uh, uh, affect you in any way, but uh, don't enter your actual password and you're not gonna be at fall for it but you can imagine how uh, people could fall for it with this kind of an attack, right? So if you check that out on lab 10 if you're interested, right? Uh, but otherwise, all of this goes away if you just follow the golden rule, only use prepared statements. Uh, it'll sanitize the inputs, in other words, and I've gotten rid of the comic now, but it will take that, take that string and it'll sanitize it, it'll escape that, double, that quote there, right? And make sure that little Bobby Table's name actually gets in there. Uh, never use anything else. It's just simpler. It's actually more efficient to use prepared statements, et cetera. Um, not a year goes by where we don't see like a, a programming contest team or uh, like a corn hacks team or something that's named their team name after an SQL injection just as a joke. But, and it's never actually, I, ever actually caused any problems, but you can do that. Right. So always use prepared statements. Um, what else was there? Oh, yeah. Uh, other things, so other items for Monday, right? We're going to talk about proper logging systems. Since it is part of you, the requirements, it's bonus in the other section, but it's required for this section, I'll show you how to use a proper logging system and then pro uh, better connection management. A connection pool, right? And then maybe JPA. I don't know if you're interested or not. Right? So other items that we'll get to next week. Right? Uh, we're, we're far enough ahead that we could go ahead and cover JPA. Actually, this is, these two things are already advanced topics that are not going to be covered in the uh, main section. Right. Any questions? No? Uh, hi, or whoever's online. Some internet random. All right, then. Have a good weekend.